Say hello, class. Hello. <sighs> Aloha. No. When I say hello, class, you all say. Salut. No. You say hello, class. Because I said say hello, class. So you all say hello, class. That's how the joke works. It's like say good night, John. Good night, John. You got. <sighs> Sorry, the sarcasm hasn't kicked in yet. It's this is a tough room. This is a tough room. Tough room. It's too early in the morning for sarcasm. Huh? You're going to cut down my tree? How do you cut down a tree? I like jokes like that. Why? Because they're funny. Why do you have to do that? Why did you have to do what? Why did you make that joke? Why did you make that joke? Alright. Can everybody still do that? I reviewed that earlier. Everybody knows how to do that, yes? No. Okay. Okay, let's stop, let's stop. If you don't remember how to add fractions, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I am gonna throw a third one in there. Plus two, oops, sorry. Plus one half, there we go. If I wanna add that up, I have to think to myself, what I need to do. Now the problem with the way you guys were taught math back in the day, most of you, is you were just told what to do, right? When you add and subtract fractions, you gotta have a common denominator. You were told that, right? If you think about it and what is actually happening, then that reminds you of when you need those common denominators. Three fifths. One, two, three, four, five. Three fifths is a little bit more than half, yeah? Four sevenths, I don't know why I chose such pain in the butt fractions, that was stupid of me. Four sevenths is a little bit less than half, right? Just make the Doctor Strange symbol and act like it's a fraction. So a little bit, oops, that was a little bit more than half. Four sevenths is a little bit more than half, yeah, 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 thank you. So four sevenths is a little bit more than half, right? and half is half. The reason we need a common denominator is because we have no idea how much of this is filled in when I add it together. Everybody with me? That's why we need a common denominator. That's also why you don't need it when you're multiplying. So if I was gonna find a common denominator, which I need to do, if you know your times tables, it doesn't take very long to find a common denominator if you're good with your times tables, if you have them memorized. Not if you know them, if you actually have them memorized. And by memorized, I mean if I say seven times four, you automatically say 28 without even once looking up and thinking about it. Everybody says they know their times tables, but then when they're put to the test, they all have to think about most of them. That's okay, all right? Back in my day, we had to memorize them all the way up to 12 and it's automatic, and it makes your life way easier. If you wanna do one thing that'll make math 10, math 11, and math 12 easy, it's learn your times tables. And when I say learn them, no, even more importantly than knowing how to use a calculator, I, Elijah, I nearly called you Isaiah. Different prophet, sorry. See what I did there? Nothing, okay. Um, more than that, because you see, how often did I go to my calculator yesterday when we were going over it? Almost never because I know my times tables, like that. Everybody cool? So, you guys that said you needed to review this, you're all cool with why we need a common denominator now, yes? What's the easiest way to find a common denominator if you don't see it immediately? We talked about it yesterday. A common multiple. So if I multiply all those together, I'm gonna get a common denominator, aren't I? So what's five times seven? 35, what's 35 times two? 70. 70, so 70 is the bottom, right? Which means this guy had to multiply by seven and two, didn't it? 14. So this guy has to multiply by 14. This guy had to multiply by five and two, which is what? 10. 10. This guy had to multiply by five and seven, so what's that? 35. 35, and then you just rewrite it. 42 plus 40 plus 35, and then you would add it up. Is everybody cool with adding? Subtraction is the same thing, yes? 
So if when I add that up, I get 82 and 35, which is 112 and 5, 117 over 70. Now, we get back to this point. Is that right? Yes. No. Well, it's a problem. If the proper fraction is still technically correct, then you have to Exactly. Did we add the fractions? Yes. What was my goal in writing that question? To show me that you guys could add fractions. Did you? One sec, Anna. Did we add the fractions? So at the very least, if I was marking you on that scale of one to four, where two is you know what you're doing, do we get a two here? Right. How could we get a three? What could you use to show me more mathematical knowledge to get you from two to three? You could do an improper fraction, which is what? So there's the two, one and 47 seventieths. There's the three. How could you get me a four if something else were to happen? If that simplifies and you simplified it, you'd get to the four. Does everybody understand? Before you leave high school, that is how you're going to start being assessed in math class. Everybody understand? Which part, Anna? The adding of the fractions or the assessment? because I had to multiply five by seven and two. Mm -hmm. And seven times two is 14. So I had to do three times 14. And where'd you get the 10 from? Well, this guy had to multiply by five and two, which is 10. Well, so this guy had to multiply, the seven had to multiply by five right there, and then again by two. If I'm going to multiply by 5 and 2, it's the same as multiplying by 10. Cool? Everybody good? All right. Subtraction is the same way. Is everybody cool with regular fractions? Excellent. What if I make the mixed numerals? 1 and 7 eighths plus 2 and 5 sixths. Oh. You got two choices here, yeah? What is one choice you could do? You could change to improper fractions, which is what most of you were taught as kids, right? Most of you were taught to go improper here, yeah? So what would you do? Times plus and get what? 15 over 8 plus times plus 17 over 6. Now we're in the same boat as we were there, right? So what's my common denominator? You could use 48, because you could just multiply them together. You could also use 24. If you know your times tables, you see 24 right away, right? Does it hurt you to use 48? Of course not, because you're just going to simplify later, right? So if I used 48, then this would be times six and this would be times eight, wouldn't it? Everyone agree? If I use 24, then this is times what? Three. Three, and this is times what? Four. Four. Is everybody with me? Okay. So that's 45 plus 68, which is 113 over 24. Do I get my two? Do I get my two out of four here? Yeah. Yes. How do I make it three out of four? Improper. How do I make it four out of four? Simplify if needed. Everybody with me? Mike. Uh, it's actually a correct first time. You said that there, um, one of the highest uh, non-zero numbers is one and four, but you never told what it was. Prime numbers. Because there isn't a highest prime number. They recently found a prime number that's up in the billions. Amazingly. A number that has only two factors, one and itself. Like 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29. But there's no pattern to them. They just occur randomly. And believe it or not, there's a prime number up in the billions 
that has no factors except itself in one. So it can only be created by time. Yeah. Yep. Great. Can everybody, everybody good with mixed numerals? Do I need to review it one more time? We don't do a lot of fraction operations as a goal in grade 10, but we do use them a lot. Does everybody understand? It's part of your calculations. Up till grade 10, it was the end of your calculation, wasn't it? Up to grade 10, this would be the question that was on the test, right? That type of question. Now, that's only part of what you're doing to get to the end. Everybody cool? All right. Let's change colors to multiply now. Uh, can I multiply those? You should simplify first, right? Because this is the mistake that we make in elementary school. We give you simple ones to multiply and you just multiply straight across, don't you? Back in grade three, the teacher spent forever on adding and subtracting, and then she showed you this, or he, times two-fifths. Multiplying's easy. You just go straight across and get six-twentieths, which you then simplify to three-tenths, right? Which is wonderful when the numbers are small. What happens when the numbers are big? How many of you have 16 times 15 at sitting in your head? Probably not many of you, yes? Yeah. So we look to simplify now. Now, everyone says, Mr. Myers, why would I do that? I just take it into my calculator and go, right? I could just go with my calculator, 16 times 15, 25 times 14, and get the answer, right? Everybody with me? But here's the reason we don't want you to do that. What would we do here with 16 and 14? Do they share anything? What? Two. They both divide by two, right? So this guy can become eight and this guy can become seven. Everybody agree? What can I do with 15 and 25? They both divide by five. So this guy's going to become three and this guy's going to become five. Yes? Now, eight times three, we've got that in our head, no problem. Five times seven, we've got that in our head, no problem. Everybody cool? We all remember this? Now, there's a reason we get you to do this. Another mistake we make with you guys is we show you something. We don't tell you when it's useful. Right? We show you something and you say, rightly so, when am I ever going to use this? Because your grade four teacher who's teaching you this doesn't tell you that in grade 11, you're going to need that skill again. Okay? I am telling you that. You need to know how to do this. Because as you go further in math, and math comes up in a lot of jobs, you're going to need to know how to deal with this. And I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to show you. If I had x times x plus 3 over x plus 1 times x plus 1 over 3x. Please notice that what I drew there in green is just fractions, isn't it? Please notice that that fraction and that top and bottom, I can get rid of them. Does everybody see that? Just like I did with numbers. That's why we show you this skill because when it gets more complicated, you can deal with that. Is everybody with me? <sighs> so even though you may not want to learn this, you may be like, I don't need that. Many. You still need that skill. Cool? The answer here, then the X's would also cancel. You would have X plus three over three. And that is a lot easier to deal with than the original problem. Wouldn't that be the No. That's for later. Okay. No. X can be any number there because you can't solve that. No, no, you can only cross out the threes if it's X times X plus Yes. X plus three, you can't cross out the three. That's for later. Don't worry about it. 
Everybody's cool? Okay, what if it's mixed numerals? Can I do that right now? Or do I have to change it? I have to change it, why? I have to use improper fractions when I'm multiplying and dividing. So that's gonna be 7 fourths times 55 20 firsts. Can I do any canceling there? 7 21. So now I've got 55 over 12. Everybody cool? Is that enough fractions for now? Like you have enough, you've remembered enough. Everyone is okay? Okay, because we will be using them all year. I don't want to spend a whole lesson on them. Everyone's good? All right. So now, if you go in your data booklet, please, not data booklet, pink book to page 12, we will actually get started. You will get a data booklet. Oh, <coughs> Anna, I don't have any of those right now. They're coming to me. So I'm going to give you the, this right here. They're here. I just got to get them. Like, there's going to be a mail slot in door, and one by one over an hour, but if I'm just going to slowly... No, they're going to send the box down from the school board office to me, either today or tomorrow. Pass that to I'm Anna, please, Jazz. To, I'm not trying to be serious about so, uh, Aiden, yeah. the only reason I'm making any sort of deal out of this is to let you know I make the jokes in here. A sense of I'm the funny guy. Every human being has the right to a sense of humor. Yes, yes, you do. Terrific. Yeah, but you gotta have a good sense of humor to be funny. Um, you only have to be funny to yourself. You don't have to be funny yeah. to me. That'll do for now. What's your name? Hello, Peyton. Um, Anna, please give me that piece of set of paper I just gave you. Pass it back to me. Josh, have you done any photocopying? Can you copy one of these for Peyton for me? Thanks. Okay. All right. So we're just going to wait a second. Peyton, he's getting you uh, uh, the notes that we use. Um, everybody else in the class has a book already, but I'm out of those books. They're coming tomorrow. So you got to use regular paper for a day or two until I get those books. Aiden. Half serious question. Half serious question? Yeah. Which half? The good half or the bad half? Is it Siri or is it ass? See what I did there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which is it? No, a test. test is a test. So only a test is being done that day. So yeah. we can do a test and then like nap the rest of the class. Well, no, because I always make sure the day before a test I give you a large assignment so you have something to do after the test that we will come to the next day. I want to But you're welcome. To, you're always welcome to sleep through my class. It just means you got to do the work later. Unlike many other people, Ultimate if you miss theory. something in my class... The punishment is that you missed it. If you continually miss stuff in my class, the punishment is you fail. You guys are big kids. You can choose to sleep. I don't care. But just accept the consequences for your behavior. That's what I believe. I used to have a prof at university that would, I'd sleep through his class every single day because I took a class from 4.30 to 6 o'clock. Dumbest time to take a class, isn't it? When do you want to take a nap? 4.30. 4.30. Every day, Right? Oh, you're starting to get tired. Uh, every day I took that class, Mondays and Wednesdays, 4.30 to 6 o'clock. And every day he would start talking. Nom, 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 nom. And he would just tuck my essays under my elbow. Never said a thing. 
Just tuck them under there. And then I'd wake up. But it was a writing class, and I was a good writer, so he left me alone. See how that works? All right. I did get one prof got mad at me for sleeping in his class. And another prof thought I was narcoleptic. I slept in her class so much. Narcolepsy is that disorder that you have where sometimes you just fall asleep. She thought I was narcoleptic, but she was really boring and horrible. And I said, no, I'm not narcoleptic. Your class is boring. I don't know. I'm not narcoleptic, so I haven't done a lot of research on it. But uh, that prof did not like that answer. She did not appreciate my opinion of her class. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't care. It cost me $800 to take her class and tell her whatever the hell I want. <laughs> you guys are here for free, so you're stuck. All right. There must be a lineup at the photocopier. So no big deal. Um, Peyton, there's not going to be a lot. Oh, no, here it is. Look at that. I filled up the time perfectly. Thanks, man. You caught them both times. Nice. Okay, so we are going to open, our first unit is on measurement. The world has two measurement systems. One of them is used in the entire world except in three countries. Out of all 200 countries in the world, 197 of them do the smart thing. Three of them do the stupid thing. Unfortunately for us, one of the three that does the stupid thing are the Americans, and we're attached to them. So we have to learn the stupid one as well. It drives me up the wall, but what are you going to do? So we have to learn two systems. Yes. The stupid one is the imperial system. And it is used in, just like I said, three countries in the world. One is the U.S. Pretty powerful country. They got a lot to say. Can anybody name, I will give you 10 guesses, and I guarantee that 30 of you, if I gave you 10 guesses each, you wouldn't be able to come up with the other two countries, even though that would be 300 guesses. And there's only 199 countries in the world other than the United States. And you still wouldn't get it because the other two countries are so minuscule that, no. Turkey's gigantic. Brazil's gigantic. No. Nether Netherlands? No, the Dutch are the smartest people in the world. Why would they ever do that? They kept the ocean out of their country. It is a place in Africa, is one of them. It is not Madagascar. They have penguins. Oh, Nigeria, you're getting warm. No, not Congo. Congo is, where it was a French colony, and the French invented the metric system. So, of course, their colonies are all metric. It's okay, buddy. Nobody's going to get it. I don't know geography. Liberia. Oh. That was right on the tip of your tongue, right, Dakota? Yeah. Liberia. On Africa that looks like this, right? There's Africa. Liberia is a little dot right about there. It's an interesting country. It was invented to send American slaves that they had stolen from Africa back so they would have a country to go to. Yeah. Wait, is that why they use the imperial system? Because they I have no idea why they use the imperial system, but they do. And the other country <laughs> that uses the imperial system, you may know it as Burma, which isn't the name of it. It's actually the name of it to everybody who is from Burma. But the people that the horrible military that is in charge of it has named it Myanmar. Those three powerhouse countries use the imperial system. Nobody else does. And ironically, oh, Myanmar, it's between India and uh, the Indo-Chinese Peninsula where Vietnam and everything is. It's up in there by Bangladesh. That help? Why the heck do they use the system? I don't know. And where does this, the imperial system come from? I'm, I'm getting to that. You get a history lesson today as well. Now, pretty much. So the imperial system is used in these three places. All right. 
And sadly for us, we use it as well because we're attached to the U.S. It is based on body parts. Why is that stupid? Why is it stupid to base a measurement system on body parts? Because everyone's body, everybody has a different body, right? And the history part of this lesson is this. Back in the day in France, there was a million rich dudes. And those rich dudes charged taxes to everybody who was going through their property. I'm a farmer. I got to get from point A to point B. I got to go through 10 rich dudes places. They all charge me taxes based on what I'm carrying through there. But every measurement system was different. So I never knew how much I was going to pay in taxes. So part of the French Revolution was, screw this, we're going to invent a proper, a proper measurement system that's the same everywhere. And we'll get to that in a second. But it is based upon body parts, some of which you know, foot. Right? That's the easy one. Now, what I want to talk about out here, <coughs> based upon body parts, which are non-standard. Right? If you're going to pay a tax based on the length of the trailer you're pulling through somebody's property, and that person has small feet, are you going to pay more or less? More, because your trailer might be 30 feet long. And then the next guy is Shaquille O'Neal with feet this big and you're paying a different amount of tax. Stupid, right? Right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do four columns. Volume, area, length, and mass. Those are the four things that we really measure. Now I want to ask you guys, do you know some measurements that we use for those four things that we use that is imperial. Just shout them out. It's a brainstorm. We use feet. Is that volume, area, length, or mass? Length. Excellent. Feet. Who else? What else do we have? Pardon? Metal? Oh, well, that's when we use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm talking about the, the units that we use. Meters, that's not imperial. I want imperial ones. Inches, where would that go? Volume, area, length, or mass? Length, we got inches. Any more? Not, not imperial. Not imperial. Hey, Aiden, how much do you weigh? Pounds, that goes in mass. Can anybody think of some others? Pardon? Arms? No. Nope. Nobody can think of a volume. Oh, long. Gallon. Gallon is volume. Right? You buy gallons of gas in the United States. Anna. Yards is another length. We're real good at lengths. We're having some trouble with mass and volume and area. She did say meters. Yeah, but that's not imperial. Emily. Ton. Got to be careful here. T-O-N is another mass measurement. Yes, well done. Nobody can think of an area measurement or any other volume measurements? Mason. Kilometer will be metric. You're going to have something to say in a minute. Mile is another length. I'm out of room in the lengths. Billy Bob. Yard. Yard, already on there. What else? How many of you bake? Went, went cups. Excellent. Cups. What else? Metric again. You're jumping to the next box all day, Mason. I should have filled them both in first. Teaspoon. Teaspoon. Tablespoon. Excellent. I'm running out of room there. Area is a tough one. Most areas are just these squared, right?
But there is one met or one imperial area that we use acres. I don't even know how big an acre is. I've never bothered to look it up because because I don't care. It's it's a stupid measurement system. But I do know that a baseball field is about an acre. All right, so we got a bunch there. Everybody's cool with them, yeah? All right. So let's go on to the smart one. It's not actually called the metric system because it's called the metric system because it's based on the meter, but it works for everything, length, width, or length, mass, everything. So it's actually called the system international or SI. We know it as the metric system because when you're measuring length, it's meters. Now, Zaro, I'm glad you're here. In Montreal, Zaro, if I ask you your height, what would you tell me? How tall are you? French. You use centimeters, don't you? Right? Yeah. Centimeter and meter. Why would Zaro use centimeters and meters? Because when I ask Elijah his height, what's your height? Six, foot. six feet. Why does Zaro use meters and centimeters and Elijah uses six feet? Because he's Quebec and Quebec does French. We still use Imperial. All right. So, first thing. It comes out of France in the 1700s. And it was designed to standardize, standardize measurement. Because it was stupid that whoever was the lord of one area decided how to measure something. Okay? That's where it came from. Now, what's it based on? It's based on 10 just like we count because there's only 10 numbers that we count right 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and what's the next number 10 one group of 10 with zero left over then you get up to 20 two groups of 10 with zero left over right and we can split those numbers up into decimals which are tenths hundredths thousandths right and all I got to do is move the decimal. That's what metric is. So, based on 10, we count in tens. So it makes sense. Again, I have volume, area, length, and mass. Now, you guys had a million metric ones. What do you got? Kilometers. Is that volume, area, length, or mass? Length, kilometer. What else? Grams. Grams. Volume, area, length, or mass? Grams. Mass. Good. Grams. What else? Pound. Pound pounds is Stone. imperial. Seven miles. Kilograms. Kg. What else? Miles, miles is, met is uh, imperial. Kilometer. kilometer we've already got. Decimeter. Milliliters. Volume milliliters, decimeters, liters, liters centi centimeters, decameters. Now, what do you notice all the way down there, all the way down there, there and there? Liter meters, centimeters, decimeters, decameters, kilometers. What changes? The prefix, right? In the SI system, oops, that should not should be highlighted. The prefix tells you the size. And it works for all of them. Okay, so here's how it works. The smallest one that we use is milli. Millimeter, milligram, milla, 
liter, right? The next one is what? Centi, because it's 10 times bigger, right? Milli is French for a thousand, mille. Centi is French for a hundred, cent. What's next? It's a thousand, a ten, a hundred. Yes, deci, which is a tenth. And then we get to the base. In length, what's the base in the metric system? Where do we start everything from? Meters. In weight, where does it start? Grams. In volume, where does it start? Liters. Everybody cool? And then we get, there's three more. Deca. Hecto. And kilo. And each time we go up a step, we multiply or we divide by 10. Everybody cool? So, if I start with 1,000 millimeters, when I go up to centimeters, that's divided by 10, yes? So this would be 100 centimeters, which means how many decimeters? 10 dms, then 1. Now I got to start dividing again. 0.1, I move the decimal. 0 0.01, I move the decimal. 0 0.001, I move the decimal. Is everybody cool? And the thing about the SI system is it doesn't matter what we use. The prefixes always work, no matter what. Whether you're measuring how much liquid is in a container or whether you're measuring your mass when you step on a scale. Everybody cool? Aiden. Out of curiosity, I don't know if you have an answer. Is the reason that the U.S. hasn't bothered to try and change to the SI system because they're too stubborn or because they think it's too much of a hassle? I don't know. I know they don't like the French in general. In my mom, Canada turned metric in 1970, I think. And my mom was like, everyone was really mad about it then too. I don't know why. The American military and all American science is done in metric. How many of you guys watch Mythbusters ever? They show the math, don't they? And they always show the math in inches and feet and stuff, right? They didn't do the work in inches and feet. They did the work in metric and then changed it to inches and feet for the viewing public. Because it makes no sense. Everybody cool with this? Aiden, again. Yes, they make lots of jokes about it on Big Bang Theory. Americans will never follow the metric system? No, they won't. So, millimeter, centimeter, meter, kilometer. These are all length, right? But will it work with everything? I could put grams there, I could put liters there, and it would still work. Everybody with me? Okay, so this is our SI. Now, the first thing I've got here is the word referent. Does anybody know what a referent is? Does anybody see a word in referent? Refer, refer right? What does it mean to refer to something? You go back to it, right? You're not actually saying the thing. You're talking about going back to it, right? So a referent in measurement is something you can use to give you an idea of what you're actually measuring. Everybody with me? I already gave you a referent today, and I didn't make any point, any big deal of it. I want to see if anybody remembers. Did I, at any point in what I have been saying, tell you a, some kind of measurement and then compare it to something else? Yeah. What was it? Um, what? Uh, Ryan? Feet and centimeters. Pardon me? Comparing height. Comparing height? Okay, yes, I did do that. I compared the two systems to each other. How big's an acre? A baseball field. That is a referent. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Do you know how big an acre is? I don't, but I know it's about the size of a baseball field. Have all of you seen a baseball field? No. So 
You've never driven by a baseball diamond. I'm not usually looking at the car window. Okay. How big of a baseball field? A base the, Wait, with the fence. There's different sizes now. Well, like this like, is getting no, complicated. No, with the fence. Okay. Like that <laughs> size, about you know, that seems a, very an high. actual baseball field with a home run fence, no, like what's crazy. behind Yale. Okay, Aiden. Fine. You you never have. Relax. It's not always about you. Most of the rest of us have seen a baseball field at some point in our lives and are able to say that that is an acre, right? Yeah. That's a referent. Now I want you guys to come up with a referent for millimeter, centimeter, meter, and kilometer. Talk to your neighbor if you want. Figure out something that you have available to you to give me the length of a millimeter. You can go anywhere you want. You're going to fill in all four of those. Actually, I lie. You're going to fill in all eight of these. Go. Would anybody like to volunteer what they said was a referent for a millimeter? Aiden? A Aiden said the width of his pencil lead. Okay, does anybody have another one? I'm not going to write down all of them. I just want to hear some more. Does anybody have another one? Nobody? You just left it blank? You can't be wrong. It's a referent. I mean, the only way it could be wrong is if you said a millimeter is the length of my arm. So we had a pencil lead. <coughs> Nobody else has one. I personally use a fingernail. So why didn't you say it? Don't be a wuss. Yeah. All right, let's try a, a centimeter. What do people got? You, we got a pinky width. A pinky width. Anybody else got one? That's exactly the point of this exercise, Jazz. Everybody says, it's a centimeter. I don't know what a centimeter is. How big's a centimeter? I don't know. Nobody else has another referent for a centimeter? Well, what about a meter? You carry a meter stick with you? Yes, all the time. You're not an ego Montoya. You do not need a sword. Someone killed his father, so they have to prepare to die. Everybody knows that. What's a meter? You carry a table with you? Well, it matters how big it is. How about it, like a table? I carry a stool. Nobody can give me an idea of a meter. Half of the size. A binder. Open binder. Okay. For me, it's about a step. One step's about a meter. If you put that meter stick down on the ground and you take a decent step, it's about a meter. You're short. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Now, what makes this one difficult? What makes the kilometer one difficult? It's big, right? A pinky we've all got. A fingernail we've all got. We can all take a step. Do we have something that we can hold on to 
that we could use to measure a kilometer? Of course not. Now, Mason had an idea. He talked about a car, right? In what? Yes, I know what he's talking about. He's using driving. So he is comparing the amount of time it takes to go somewhere. For me, I can walk a kilometer in about 10 minutes of walking. Or five minutes of running. That's my referent. So I know if I walk to the mall and it takes me half an hour, how far have I walked? About three kilometers. Everybody with me? Now, let's talk about the relationship. Which of those four categories is the one that we start counting from? I got four categories right here. Which one of those is the one that I have to start counting from? Yes, it is meters. Meters is the base because everything in that group is based on the meter, right? So a millimeter is one one thousandth. Or what decimal? Zero, zero, one. What's the centimeter? One one hundredth or point zero one. What's a kilometer? One thousand, not a fraction. Everybody good? Now in Canada, we really only use those four. But if you go to Europe, they use all the stuff in the middle. Decimeters, decameters, hectometers. They use them all. We use those four. Everybody understand? All right. What do you got for an inch? That's why I said fill in all eight. What's inch in French? What? You're actually really close. It's pouce. What's a pouce? Thumb. This one's a really tricky one. What's a referent? For a foot. A foot. Or as somebody said in our, in our culture, a subway. You don't. That's why it's a referent. Quiznos is better. Actually, no. Quiznos is better if you toast. Subway sandwiches were never designed to be toasted. So when you toast a subway sandwich, it's not as good. What's a yard? Another step, because a yard and a meter are almost the same. What about a mile? Is a mile bigger or smaller than a kilometer? Bigger. A mile is about 15 minutes of walking for me. Or about seven minutes of running. Now, here we get into trouble. Why are these going to be hard to fill in? Because there's no relation to each other that repeats. We know that in the metric system, it's always going to be times are divided by 10, isn't it? And that's how we count. We count in tens. But here, we're in trouble. What's the base? Is there one? There isn't a base, is there? Because they're all different. So if we start with the inch as the base, because it's the smallest thing, right? 
Why is that another stupid thing? Are there things in the world smaller than an inch? So shouldn't there be measurements for that? If you have a measurement system? So, if that's my base, what's a foot? 12 inches. That makes good sense. Because we count by 12s, don't we? No, they don't. 12 inches. Stupid. What's a yard? This is the abbreviation for inches and feet. What's a yard? Who knows? Nobody knows how big a yard is? Exactly. What would you guess a yard is compared to feet? 24? That maybe would make sense. At least it would be doubling, right? It's not. It's three times. So a yard is three feet or 36 inches. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Now, what then should a mile be? You know it's not going to make any sense. It makes no sense. A mile is 1,760 yards. And in feet, it's 5,280. What? We count 5,280? Idiotic. That's why this measurement system sucks. Because it's dumb. Now, you don't have to memorize any of this. You're going to get it in your data booklet when I give it out to you. The point I'm showing you here is which is easier to work with? SI, because SI, all you're doing is moving the decimal place. <coughs> Turn the page over. Like I said, you can stay with your neighbor. I want you to give me an estimate. So you're not allowed to measure in SI and in Imperial for each of these six things. That's exactly the point, Elijah. Cool. The reason this is difficult is because I haven't told you exactly how to measure, isn't, isn't it? So go. Yes, Peyton, you may go get a drink or do whatever you need to do. I am not feeling well today. No? No. Does anybody have an estimate for the width of the locker? Is that SI or Imperial? Imperial. 1. My pen's not working. 1 foot. Who has an SI for it? Half a meter. Half a meter, so 50 centimeters, right? The actual width of a locker door, a locker, is 13 inches. Pretty good job, one foot people. And it would be in SI, sorry, is about 35 centimeters. Not even bad for SI. Good job. Everybody cool? Height of your desk. You're all sitting in front of a desk. How tall is it? What's your guess? Pardon? I got a 70 centimeter. Do I have an imperial? Three and a half feet. Two and a half feet. Measure it. Uh oh. What tape measure have I given him? Is it metric or is it imperial? It's imperial. What do you got? What number? 
30 inches. 30, oops, sorry. 30 inches, which is in SI, anybody? Eighty. Okay. All right. Lengthen your pencil. Now, why am I getting you guys to do this? To make sure that nobody says their pencil is ten feet long. How long in SI is the pencil that you are writing this with? Length. Length. What do you say, Avery? 15 centimeters? And what about imperial? Two? That's two inches. Okay, that looks better. And obviously we can't do an actual because everyone's is different. What about the size of an ant? One millimeter? Two millimeters? Good question. It matters the kind of ant you're asking about, yeah? Because bullet ants are an inch long. This long. I would not like that thing to be crawling all over me, but they exist. Yeah, it's supposed to be the most painful insect sting bite you can have. What about the height of a giraffe? My last class argued about this forever. Guys, ladies, gentlemen, my last class argued about this forever. One kid said the giraffe is 10 meters tall. No, no. 10 meters. No, 15. 15 meters? Who's got some guesses? Who's got some guesses? Full size giraffe. Take a guess. I got 30 feet. 12 what? 12 meters? 12 meters. We got an 8 meter guess. 20 meters? That's the size of a Tyrannosaurus. Part 14 feet. The tallest giraffe ever recorded, ever, was five meters. Five meters tall. Now, more importantly than the size of the giraffe, check this out. Now, length of a gym. How long's our gym? <laughs> If, you, if a giraffe died in our gym, it would be that long. No, longer. Both gyms are about the same size, aren't they? They both carry exactly one basketball court. 40 to 50 feet is Mason's guess. 40 to 50 feet. I got 12 meters. Any other guesses? 60 meters? I'm just, I, I'm just trying to hear you, Ada. Yes. 60 meters. Anybody else? That's kind of the point of this exercise, Jazz, to show you guys that you really don't know what you're talking about. How long is a basketball court? Exactly. Ninety four by fifty feet. 
30 by 15. Not bad. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to use giraffes as our referent for basketball courts now. And that's okay. That's fine. He was seven giraffes tall. One time I was at a zoo and the giraffe stuck his head out of the fence. And I was looking at the giraffe and my wife was looking at me and the giraffe's head was right here. And I didn't tell her. And she turned and there was the giraffe right there. It was super funny. But it was before cell phones, so I don't have video of her going, ah! Okay. The last thing we are going to do today is you are going to fill in those next four questions. Right now, talk to your neighbor. Answer those four questions. No, there's going to be a different thing for homework, Jazz. Answer those four questions. Go. Homework tonight is try to answer those four questions. And tell me those five measurements. Okay? Okay.